Thanks for joining us. I'm Gabe with Backwoods Pursuit. Today we're going to do a what's in my pack ultralight version here for an early season archery elk hunt. Of course I got my calls and whatnot so if you're doing a mule deer hunt you take those out for that. But I'm going to go over each of the items that I take with me on a three or so day hunt and maybe a weekend trip uh, for a backcountry hunting uh, trip. So I'm going to go over each of these items and of course I'll put a link in the description to each of these for you so you can check them out for yourself if you want to add any of them to your kit. Um, but as always, we always appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button for us as well and check out our website, backwoodspursuit.com and check out our Facebook and Instagram accounts. I'll put links to all that down in the description for you so you can check it out for yourself. Let's get started. start I'm going to be throwing everything in the XOK3 4800. I found this is plenty big for easily for a trip like this and up to five six days is pretty easily as well. Plenty of space for me you could go even smaller than that uh, depending on what gear you have but that's what we'll be using here. Let's start over on this side here on the optics here I've got a slick 634 tripod with the Sure VA5 head. Love that combo. Super smooth combo. Great for glassing. Nice and lightweight right around three pounds if I remember correctly on that great combo for binoculars or a spotting scope. Uh, for a spotter, I've been using the Miopta S2 uh, 82 millimeter spotter. It's a little bit on the heavy side, not typically that's something that I would take on elk hunting trips, but definitely on mule deer. Um, and, and sometimes I'll take it elk hunting, but not all the time. Um, I always take a binocular tripod adapter. Um, that I've found that I use that all the time, especially elk and deer hunting. Uh, this is the Swarovski SLC. Uh, this is the, the newer one with the uh, with the Arca Swiss bottom. That's super nice to have so there's no adapter needed there. Um, as far as binos here, I've got the, the Black Creek Raptor Bino Harness and the Swarovski SLC uh, binoculars there. And then I've got the the Sig Kilo over here as far as my range finder. Then on this side, a place for my phone uh, for taking pictures and that sort of thing. I typically use my camera to take pictures out in the field, but sometimes I'll take a larger camera as well. I'm going over to food prep here. I've got my stove. This is, of course, a fuel canister. This is the Tokes Titanium uh, with the Optimus Crux light on the inside of that. It runs about 13, 13 and a half ounces total for the canister and the stove. It's about as light as I've been able to find there. Um, I do have a jet boil as well, a jet boil flash light that I'll take sometimes if it is a little more convenient than this, but this is a super nice and light system. And my Sea to Summit coffee mug uh, for my coffee, um, and my Sea to Summit long handle titanium spoon. I love that thing um, as far as food prep goes. And then on my kill kit here, I've got the Argali High Country Pack, and this is the bone out uh, version. And a little, I keep a little some nitro gloves and a little knife sharpener in there uh, that way for for that. Um, if I'm going to be in a situation where I'm going to need bone in, then I've got a 6 a.m. outdoors kit that I'll that I'll bring in, in its place. And I'm a little bit weird. I'll, I'll take some of these Kevlar gloves for field dressing an animal. It's really nice that way. Um, don't have to worry about cutting your hands, uh, and it can save your Save your hands when you're field dressing. Gives you a better grip on the animal too, on the hide when you're when you're using that. Uh, as far as a knife, I've got the Argali carbon knife here. So I really like this knife. It's an S35VN steel. Really nice knife. Stay sharp and easy to sharpen as well. Um, over here, got a headlamp. This is the Black Diamond Spot, I believe it is. Could be the Storm, but I believe it's the Spot. That works really well. Um, and then, of course, as far as calls, I've got. Um, uh, Carlton, uh, one of the Carlton custom calls here, and a couple from from Phelps game calls, a couple of the custom ones that he engraved for me, so that was super nice of him. Um, diaphragms here, and then I just started using this uh, game changer call. I uh, use that with diaphragms, it's a nice unique sound there, really like that. Um, over on personal hygiene items, it's of course some chapstick. And I wear contacts, so I bring some contact solution. Uh, that's kind of my night bag here with contact solution. Uh, extra contacts and eye drops, that sort of thing. It's a pain to have to wear contacts, but kind of is what it is for me. So I've got that um, as far as that goes. Uh, some wipes and some toilet paper, of course. Need those. Wipes are a lifesaver. Uh, really make things more comfortable. 
Um, this is my uh, first aid kit. I'll put a link up here as far as what I keep all in my first aid kit. Just a tourniquet, uh, you know, Israeli bandage, some of that kind of thing in here. Make sure that I'm covered. I tend to go a little bit heavier on the first aid kit than some. I'd rather be more prepared there than not, so I go a little bit more on that route. Um, of course, I got my Garmin InReach Mini. I always take that with me to be able to get a message out in case I need some help. Um, over here, and this is just a little stash pocket here I've got. Um, just extra rope, extra batteries, uh, matches, an extra headlamp of the little Cabela's uh, a clip lamps that goes right on top of your, the bill of your hat. Just in case my other lamp goes out, I have an issue with that. It's an, it weighs almost nothing, so I keep that there. Uh, if I'm bow hunting, I carry my repair kit, my, my bow repair kit, just some basic stuff, D-loop string, serving, extra spring for my rest, that kind of thing. Something that if I need to do a quick repair in the field, I can do that. As far as water filtration, I've got the, the Catadine Bee Free 3 liter. I really like this, it's super nice and easy to use. Hang it in the tree, you can also get a, a quick release hose so you can gravity feed this right into your bladder if you want, but it does add a couple ounces. This I believe is like four ounces as it is, so it's nice and lightweight that way. As far as the actual bladder in my pack, I've got the Osprey uh, two and a half liter uh, hydraulics LT. Uh, it's, it's nice and lightweight, just I think five or six ounces is all. I uh, really like that. Uh, as far as bugle tube, if I'm taking one, for, if I'm going ultralight like this, I'll go with the Phelps Unrivaled. Um, I've got the Unleashed as well and the, and the Rocky Mountain Volleyball Extreme. Those are all super nice as well. Um, but that's what I'll do if I'm taking going ultralight. Um, as far as sleep system here, uh, kind of along those lines, I always take a couple trekking poles. These are the SNS Archery Carbon Light trekking poles, like 6.2 ounces each. I typically take both of them with me. Um, as far as the tent, this is my Z-Pax Duplex, 19 ounces, two-person tent. It does take two trekking poles to set up, but it's super lightweight with a floor and made a Dyneema. I love that thing. Uh, if you're trying to go ultra light, that is an awesome way to go. As far as a pad, I've got my Cedar Summit Etherlite XT. That's one of my favorite uh, ultra light uh, pads, four inches thick, super comfortable, and uh, 3.2 R value, I believe. So it gets you through most of the most of the September that you need. Um, this is my quilt. This is the Z-Pax uh, Solo Quilt. This is the 30 degree model. As, as you can see, it's itty bitty, about the size of my pad. Uh, 30 degree and 14.1 ounces. Stuff's down to nothing. Uh, that's super nice to have when it's uh, nice and lightweight like that. As far as my pillow, this is the X-Ped Ultralight uh, Medium Pillow. Uh, nice, uh, actually for an ultralight pillow, like 1.4 ounces, it's really comfortable. I do have and I often take the X-Ped Down Pillow. This is my favorite pillow, but it's over six ounces, so if I'm going ultralight, I won't take this one, but more often than not, I probably take the, the Down Pillow just because it's that much more comfortable, but that one is actually really comfortable for an ultralight pillow. Uh, for my pack here, I, I've got the Ivory Holsters, uh, EMG holster that he made did a custom job for me for my for my holster fits right on my pack It'll fit on pretty much any pack. He's got different attachments there. That's awesome holster um, As far as my sleep system still going back here. I've almost forgot this here. This is the Z Pax uh, Goose hood absolutely love this thing. So if you're using a quilt, these are a must-have I've used like a hoodie before uh, from my my jacket or my shirt and those work well too but this is awesome for glassing for a lot of different situations and it's like 0.6 ounces it's definitely worth taking i love taking that um, as far as boots i've got the solomon quest 4d gtx here um, they're nice and lightweight they're pretty good support but they're not uh, quite as lightweight as say like the alt x ultras or something which those are nice too but these give you a little more support they're not terribly waterproof and terribly durable in my experience so if i'm going to have wet weather I will snag and take the uh, Hoffman Explorers are the ones I've been using. I uh, just started using these here and so far they've done really well for me but they give you a lot more support but they are heavier, a little warmer uh, because they're all leather so it just depends on the situation but a lot of times early season warm weather I'll take the Quest GTX. Um, as far as food here, uh, I like to, to do something like a, one of these backcountry bars for breakfast and then uh, and with my cup of coffee, you got my coffee in here too like to do that in the first thing in the morning if it's real early and I don't feel like having breakfast and then grab one of these uh, for later on maybe after the 10 o'clock rush you know I've been hiking around the hills and whatnot grab one of those for my mid-morning breakfast when I have time to sit down um, and then just an assortment of whatever whatever meals you like and just do just a mountain house or something 
of that nature, Alpine Air, Peak, whatever your favorite is. Uh, take those for the dinner time off grid, make some great stuff too. I like to take some of these kind of snacks. This is some of the mango fire and toffee break, some high calorie type snacks that do are, are really nice to have just to, to grab on a snack on the go. Uh, so those will be kind of part of my lunch with granola bars, dried fruit, almonds, that sort of thing. Uh, over here on the clothing side of things here, I usually take uh, an extra pair of socks. I always have an extra one in my pack for stocking purposes. And then just in the event that you were to get really wet and need to swap out a pair of socks, it's always nice to have. That's just something I've, I've always done. Not really necessary. I don't know how many times I've actually used that, but it's nice to have. Um, usually take a beanie of some kind, whether it's a, a true beanie or a you know, ball club or something like that. Uh, take those. Always take an extra uh, pair of boxers or whatever you're wearing um, just in case and just to have an extra pair, especially if you're going to be out for multiple days, I take those. As far as clothing here, I you know, pretty much always take something lightweight, like this is the Sitka Core Lightweight Hoodie and then the Midweight Quarter Zip. Uh, those are two of the foundational pieces or if it's First Light, uh, you'd be with the, uh, the Wick and the Kiln. Those are two I've used a lot of in, in recent years as well. Those are going to get you through a majority of the times when you're out there for September. And then you throw in something like the Kelvin Light hoodie on top of these two. And it, you're going to be pretty well covered for just about every situation in September, as say for rain and that sort of thing, if it really gets heavy in the rain. As far as pants, got the Sitka Mountain pant here. It's really going to be uh, warmer. You know, you'd go with the Apex or the Ascent in Sitka or in First Light. Of course, you got the Corey Guide or the, the Guide Light. Um, those are the ones that I've used and those work really well also on the first light side of things. Um, so that is pretty well oh, as far as some gloves, almost forgot some gloves here. Um, as far as gloves, I usually take something because the mornings can get cool, especially if you're archery hunting, holding your bow. These are just the first light guide gloves, uh, the merino, uh, first light merino gloves, those are nice as well. I usually take one, uh, one lightweight pair, sometimes two, depending on the situation. Uh, so that's uh, kind of what I do there. So I'm going to pull all of this together, throw it in my pack here, we'll weigh it and we'll see where we come out as far as weight and then we will wrap this up. Alright, so I went ahead and threw everything in the pack here. This is minus my water and of course not counting what I'd be wearing on the hike in. Now I do have my 82 millimeter spotter in here, so typically I don't take that on elk hunt, but occasionally I do. So I went ahead and left that in here for purposes of this total weight. So we'll see where we are running here on this. We are at 20... 9.2, 28.6, 29.2, right around in there. So not too bad on the weight. Um, love to hear your feedback. Drop a comment there if you think there's anything in here that we don't need, anything that I've got in here that, that I should be taking that wasn't a part of, of our pack here. So drop a comment there. Thanks for following along here today. We'll see you next time.